Hey guys, Eric Helms here, and we've got some Q&As that we want to cover this month, barely sneaking it into April, uh, and actually, I think today's the first of May for us in the Southern Hemisphere, but anyway, wanted to cover um, some, some cool stuff. The first question we got uh, was, what are the pros and cons of high and low bar squats? Um, so I've got a little diagram here. On the left, we have what a high bar squat looks like. And on the right, we have what a low bar squat looks like. And then we're going to talk about the pros and cons of both. And to set this off, we're going to be primarily talking about the impacts of the, the or, the, or the, uh, the pros and cons of low bar squats in the context of being physique and strength athletes. That's mostly who watches the 3DMJ channel. But I'll try to talk it more broadly as a whole. So first thing, let's just kind of analyze these two movements a little bit. So the high bar squat, it's called the high bar simply because it sits on the upper part of your traps, so the bar is higher. While a low bar squat is typically lower on the traps and is going to be supported mostly by the rear delts. There are some significant things different in form on both of these. Um, you'll notice that um, no matter what the person does when they squat, if they're going to be able to do it properly, the bar has to stay over pretty much their center of gravity, which typically is right around midfoot. So there's going to be a greater trunk lean if you're doing a low bar squat simply to get that bar over in the middle of the, middle of the center of gravity, and you're going to have a more upright back position in a high bar squat. These are both mm -hmm. correct squats, um, so neither one is wrong. It's just what you have to do to hit, to hit the squat properly. Um, a few things. That natural shelf that the top of the traps provide is not there when you do a low bar squat, so you really have to actively uh, retract and create the shelf with your rear delts by staying tight and kind of activating the lats and keeping the, the shoulders up and elbows up a little bit. Um, or the bar can slide off the back and you'll see low bar squatters in competition typically chalk the heck out of their, their, their uh, rear delts and lower trap area. Um, in the high bar squat, often you're going to have your, your knees being driven apart a little more and think of sitting between your legs um, and coming up and down on a very straight bar path, while a low bar squat is going to feel a little more like you're sitting back, sitting back, sitting back, and then firing the hips forward after you hit depth. Um, basically, there's more um, horizontal displacement of the body versus just up and down, as you will see in a high bar squat. So some technique differences. Um, a thing to point out, though, and you probably heard Mark Ripto talk about this, is there is a shorter lever arm when you're dealing with a low bar squat. Um, so you can effectively move more weight with a low bar squat, um, and that's why this is typically what you're going to see a power lifter use in most cases. And this is typically what you're going to see a Olympic lifter use in most cases because... Um, it's more similar to the up and down pattern of the Olympic lifts and will have greater transfer to things like a clean jerk or a, or a snatch because that's what the bottom position of a snatch will look like just with the arms oops, just with the arms extended overhead um, and same with the front squat you know the front squat bar would be there high bar would be there so it's more similar than than having the bar down on the, the uh, rear delts so just different applications and a bodybuilder um, there's probably a a good argument for, for either one, depending on what your strengths and weaknesses are and what the rest of your programming looks like. So in a more broad sense, uh, high bar and low bar squats both have pros and cons, and it's worth discussing both. Um, so let's first start with the high bar, and we'll compare the two. So the high bar squat, you can just tell by looking at the picture, um, there's less tension on the, ham on the hamstrings and glutes. If you look at the low bar, there's just more distance from the you know, the insertion to the origin of the hamstring, so there's going to be a greater stretch there, so greater contribution and force production. Uh, while here, the opposite is true, and what there is is a greater angle at the knee, so you're going to have more quads. So what you're going to see is, is, is more contribution from the quads and less from the glute hams and posterior chain in a low bar squat. So you've probably got another reason why you can do a little more in a low bar is typically people's posterior chain as a whole is going to be stronger uh, when it can be recruited more than the, than the quads. Um, some cons to think about. Um, because of that, yeah, you, so you're moving less weight in high bar. Is that a bad thing? Well, only if you're competing in the squat, which is why the vast majority of power lifters are going to be doing low bar squats. Now, not everyone necessarily does get more out of a low bar squat, but the vast majority do. Um, 
one of my clients, Bryce Lewis, and a tremendous powerlifter who can squat, um, you know, close to three times body weight, um, and actually has squatted over three times body weight, squats high bar, and many Olympic lifters do, and it just depends on their mechanics and and a few other things and how well they can hit depth and keep the bar path. So it's it's not as simple as low bar equals more weight, but for most people it is. Um, you will also notice that you need a whole lot more ankle flexibility in a high bar versus a low bar squat. So if that is a an issue for you, you may have trouble hitting depth or hitting depth without having the, the infamous butt wink happen at the bottom uh, if you're doing a high bar squat. So more quads is one of the pros. Um, and then another pro is just the fact that a high bar squat is more of a straight up and down kind of movement, much more like sitting in a chair. It's more natural, so it may have more applications to things like uh, sport performance where you're talking about jumping or um, things like uh, Olympic lifting or uh, what we might call quote-unquote functional activities. Um, and it's a much more natural bar placement. The first time you try to do a low bar squat, you're going to feel like it's painful in a weird position and it's quite distracting. Okay. On the other hand, we have the low bar squat. The main pro is you can move more weight um, for most, most people. And so it's a very attractive option for, for power lifters. Um, and um, like we, we said before, it requires less ankle flexibility. Um, but it does require a little more hip flexibility. And to actually get down into the, not necessarily more hip flexibility, but to get down to where your hips are below parallel, you really have to sit back, sit back, sit back, and stay tight. Um, and you'll notice that with relative ease, he's below parallel here. And here he's just at meet depth. And it's it's just because to, to sit down further, the bar would want to go back even farther. So, so getting a rock bottom low bar squat is difficult. And sometimes with some people, it may be more diff difficult to hit depth with a low bar squat, or at least takes more practice with the movement. Um, you'll see more low bar squats get called on depth than high bar, and you'll find that the more that bar is forward and forward shifted, the easier it is unless you have an ankle flexibility problem to hit depth. Um, so less tension on the quads, more is going to be on the posterior chains, um, and um, it's a less natural bar placement, but once you get used to it, it's, it's really not that bad. Uh, you just have to really know how to set your shelf. You may be chalking your, your rear delts and uh, having to just really focus on staying tight. And I think a low bar squat is a rather unnatural movement, having to sit back so far and may not be similar to jumping and certainly uh, wouldn't be what most Olympic lifters would do, although Mark Ripto would disagree. Um, and requires less ankle flexibility. So now the real question is, is which should I do? I want to get stronger. I want to get bigger. Uh, and, and what should I be doing? Well, that's when we need to think about the big picture. And most of you guys are going to be doing uh, not only squats, but probably deadlifts as well. So what I would recommend is if your goal is just to get bigger and stronger and um, without any specific comp competition goals and you don't have any specific muscle weaknesses, I'd stick to a regular deadlift and a high bar squat. Uh, that way you'll get a good blend of development across both, both muscle groups. Um, I think for a development standpoint, if you're deadlifting, you're going to be hitting your posterior chain pretty damn well, so no need to really focus on low bar squats. Um, if you were a dual athlete, like myself or a lot of our clients, you're competing probably in powerlifting in the off-season, or maybe even while you're dieting down to hit a lower weight class, and in bodybuilding, then it might be worth considering uh, the, the low bar squat. Just be aware that um, with deadlifts and low bar, um, and especially if you're doing like sumo deadlifts and low bar, there's a lot of posterior chain focus, and you'll need to do something to bring up the quads. And that might be, you know, high bar squats as an accessory, front squats so long as limiting factors in your back, um, or something like hack squats or a close stance leg press or uh, leg extensions or what have you. But um, just think about balance in the context of the whole program and what your goals are. If your goal is just to move as much weight as possible, then I would suggest getting comfortable with a low bar. So those are the pros and cons. Um, and individual uh, differences are always going to be the most important thing. If you have super long femurs or really short torso or um, really disproportionately strong quads to your, to your posterior chain, then some of these things might not apply. But in most cases, low bars, more weight, more posterior chain, high bars, less weight, more quads, and uh, just think about the context of your whole program. All right, guys, thanks for watching. This is Eric Helms signing out, 3DMJ.